Welcome along to a freezing January afternoon and welcome along to a brilliant little bike. This is the Honda CRF 300L. This is a bike I've actually never ridden before. Believe it or not, this machine, which is the, one, of, one of the staples in Honda's range, I've never ridden it. Today, we're gonna to take this out for a little bit of an explore. I mean, this is not a full-on enduro machine. This is a road bike, a, a true dual sports machine, this. So we're gonna use it today as it's intended. A little bit of exploring, a little bit of road work, a little bit of off-road work. I've not done any off-road since before COVID in about three years. I'm completely out of practice. I'm actually a little bit nervous about this one because I don't want to hurt myself. I've even got my, my big boots on. So big, I haven't got the big boy's pants on though, that's what I'm missing. Grab yourself a cup of tea and I will mount my steed. Chopsy, roll the intro. Broken nail already. Let us just take a moment to enjoy the view here. Look at that, Hampshire Hills. The Hampshire Hills. Well, I'm, I'm down by uh, near Butser Hill on the South Downs. So that's the area I'm in. As you can see, we're going to start this video as we mean to go on, <laughs> on the muddy stuff. Here is the machine. As you can see, it looks absolutely wonderful. I'm, I'm really quite surprised. What, what's impressed me so far is physically how big this bike is. I thought it was going to be really small, but it's actually probably a bit bigger than, you know, a dedicated enduro machine. And what is even more impressive about this bike is it's only 5,400 pounds. It's not a lot of money. You know, it's not full competition machine spec, you know, and what really sells this bike, and I think why these have sold so many million worldwide is because it's not a competition machine you've got 8,000 mile service intervals 8,000 miles if you go for a competition machine like a KTM Husky you're talking hours for maintenance not miles you know you need to service those bikes every sort of 15 hours 15 to 20 hours of use 8,000 miles the tires are sort of a, a budget tire i'm not liking the look of these tires they're sort of quite on road focused you know they've, they've got a bit of nobble to them let's say a 50 50 but when i'm on these sort of muddy lanes i'm used to having a bit more of an off-road dedicated tire and you can see it's got a bit of a curvature to it you know normally they're a bit more flatter if you're on a proper off-road tire i'm also recovering from an injury it's the reason i haven't done any off-road so far this year and a lot of people are saying come on chops get out on the lanes what's wrong with you I've suffered with a, a rolled shoulder, so I've got an injured shoulder since I dropped the H2. When I dropped the H2, I didn't realise I'd hurt myself, but I'd, I'd rolled my shoulder. And then I did all of the plasterboarding in the garage, and it just destroyed it. And uh, it's all right now, there's it's no more shooting pain, but it's not, you know, I've got limited movement. I didn't want to fall off and do further damage to it. <laughs> and it's the same today, I don't want to fall off and do further damage. Getting on the bike straight away, it's like, where's, where's, where's my suspension travel gone? Let's do it. All right, these are not massively powerful. <laughs> hey, we're gonna go this side. <laughs> oh God, I am so rusty. Right, we're gonna stand up though. We're gonna stand up. That is second gear, quite nicely geared actually. You know, quite, uh, not too tall, but taller than a, taller than a, an enduro machine, the gearing. Oh, straight away, I'm, I'm rubbish. So this bike isn't a powerhouse. It's uh, uh, 27 horsepower, which is a couple of horsepower more than the old 250L Honda used to do. And I think 20, no, 26 horsepower and 27 newton meters of torque. <laughs> And it feels, you know what, that sounds not great, doesn't it? it? On paper, it doesn't sound great, but there's quite a nice little bit of punch to it. I've sat down again now, as you've noticed. Pretty, uh, pretty diabolical chopsy sat down already. This is just a little beginning lane. I've only just jumped on this bike. So I've jumped on the bike and I'm straight off road on it. I'm not even used to it. Oh, I've got a bit of chalk. 
but at least it's pretty dry. Jeez, it's hit the tarmac. <laughs> that off-road stuff's scary. I've also noticed it's got an ABS mode here. If I push that down, is that going to put it into off-road mode? Now I've actually done the off-road bit. Oh yeah, ABS off now. Right, so that's the off-road done. Phew -y. I will do more than that. That's not it, unfortunately. I'm going to have to do something else, aren't I? Unfortunately, that will not be sufficient for you lot, will it? You won't see more than that. Killing me here. So, mud to road. So this is what it's like. If you're going to go out green laning, this is what you end up doing. Hitting a bit of uh, trails, and then you're back on the road to find the next trails. So this is why this sort of bike is great, because it is more sort of road focus than a, a full-on uh, competition enduro I'm gonna call them competition enduro but to ride it's actually uh, it's actually very nice six speed with the gear indicator and it's pooling along at 40 here very very happily I think this bike is almost in a class of its own there's sort of nothing else like this on the market not in not in the UK I know in the States you've still got things like the DRZ and that and those sorts of bikes which disappeared from the UK shores 10 years ago, maybe longer. But there's nothing out there which offers the versatility you know, and those service intervals and the capability of this machine. There just isn't. Upgrades since the 250L include four kilos weight loss. So it's, it's gone from a 250 to a 300. Well, it hasn't really. It's gone to a 283 cc so it's got another 30 or so uh, cc's of capacity but the actual bike has shed four kilos and it's a little bit more power a little bit more torque than the 250 but not huge amounts it's more torque i am noticing the suspension is very very soft at the rear i mean it is you know <laughs> i mean look the suspension is very very soft i know it's designed to do a little bit of off-road but it is a very very soft setup and it's completely unadjustable so you know the one of the reasons this bike is only 5400 pounds is because if you want to do a little bit more when I mean, it's fine but i guess if you want to take it to the next level and make it a little bit more capable then a suspension upgrade is probably where you want to put the extra money you know new rear shock and maybe some fork cartridges let's go right here for a little bit more off-roading Oh, you crazy fool, chaps! You crazy fool! Shall we put the uh, the eight? Oh, oh, that's a horn again. The indicator's in the horn and the wrong way round. It's a Honda. They like to do that. So ABS. Let's turn it off. Not that it's really going to make much difference today. But that's off. We're still recording down there. We'll give it a little wipe. This camera's getting absolutely trashed. Trashed stood up you know as i say i'm 62 stood up it's not a bad size if it were mine i'd probably get some slight risers to bring those bring those bars up a little bit maybe but yeah the suspension the suspension is soft the suspension is very soft so you're not putting it on the power in the third you're not it's not got the power to start spinning up like you would do on an enduro machine you know the thing about going off-road is the weight isn't it and i guess this is again where this bike differs from a full-on enduro this weighs 142 kilos fully fueled which is probably a good 30 kilos heavier than a competition machine so again you know you're down a bit on power because you want you've got an engine which is designed with reasonable service intervals it's just gonna be hey and you're up in weight as well well we've almost got enough power to spin her up there almost oh she is she's spinning oh. <laughs> so this is great fun this is what this bike's all about and it's not huge money so you know you, you've got your big adventure bikes where you want to go a bit of off-roading on your big adventure bikes but they're they're all very well but they're a lot of money to risk dropping five and a half grand let's call it six grand with a few little suspension upgrades 
and you can do this sort of thing all day long put some luggage on it perfect and if you drop it it's only 140 kilos you're not going to give yourself a hernia trying to pick it up <laughs> yeah i've sat down again wimped out oh we've got some spinach call me popeye Hey, that is a lot of fun. Yeah, it's got no ABS now. <laughs> oh dear, I enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that. Let's have a closer look at the bike. So, looking at this fine steed, it doesn't look really any different to one of those, you know, full-on dedicated competition bikes you've got a steel frame i think we've got a steel frame here not aluminium so a steel frame which means it's strong which means it's strong one thing which did make me chuckle is the indicators the indicators are directly from the 1990s <laughs> no leds halogen bulbs so the lighting's all all old school you know but these indicators look at them that is straight out the 90s love it Looks like there's some sort of little toolkit here. So not only have you got a proper dash, looks like we've got, and a lock for your helmet. Helmet lock? Bloody helmet lock there, look. Can't remember the last time I saw a bike with a helmet lock. Probably the 1990s again. And this looks like we've got some sort of toolkit thing in here. Oh, there we go, toolkit. Lockable fuel cap, 7.8 litres goes in there. The seat is pretty hard, to be fair. You know, if I was going to do some proper miles on this, I'd have to get a, some sort of better seat. I mean, it's amazing compared to, again, you know, a full-on competition machine. You see, it's got a bit of width to it, but it's quite a hard foam. So, again, if this is mine, I may spend a little bit and get some softer foam in the seat. But you know what? What, what a great, what a great little bike and what it just amazes me about this is there's no one else makes a bike like this if i'm wrong tell me but i don't know of any other lightweight bikes like this which have got proper service intervals proper service you know, eight thousand miles i wouldn't do eight thousand miles on it i'd probably change the oil every three to four thousand i wouldn't do eight thousand you know that's too much but you know we're not measuring in hours here that is incredible and don't she look pretty? I've just looked up the specs on my phone and it's 276 millimetres of travel on the suspension, front and back. So, and if we were talking about a, you know, a dedicated competition machine, you're probably looking at 300 millimetres of travel front and back on one of those. But, I mean, it's not bad. I, I would have thought it would have been a lot less than that. So the, the travel's there, you just need to spend a little bit of money upgrading that shop. We know, again, if you were more sensible sized, it may not be a problem. I'm going to stand up because I'm enjoying this. But for me, it's definitely soft. And I think for the average human being, it would be pretty soft. <laughs> Off-roading isn't like riding a bike. It's like wheeling. Off-roading is like wheeling a bike. You've got to do it often and frequently or you absolutely forget how to do it. It's a feeling. It's a feeling. That is what riding off-road is. It's about, it's a feeling. And uh, I've lost that loving feeling. Woo! Oh, oh, oh. oh it's getting a little bit bouncy then. So I think with, with the upgrade of suspension, we'll come back. We'll mention it again, shall we? You can upgrade the suspension on this, have I mentioned it? But I think with that, you know, the rebound damping will be better. I think if you go too fast off-road on this and you push it too hard, I think it could end up catching you out, you know. And also, I don't think these tyres are brilliant either. So spend the money on tyres and suspension. And you've got a hell of a package. So there we go, the Honda CRF 300L 
very quick little ride today, a little first ride. I may go out on this again and do a little bit more off-road if I'm feeling brave enough. But I'm really impressed. I am really impressed with this bike. I knew it was meant to be good. I mean, they wouldn't have sold so many of these if it wasn't good. But it's not, you know, it's not as fast. It's not as light, you know, as, as, that, as those competition machines that I keep mentioning. But it's not what it's about. For a bike just to go out all year round, explore the surrounding countryside or even take it on a bit of a trip. I mean, there's so many extra you can get from this bike with like luggage and crash bars. You can turn this into a proper little adventure bike. And don't forget, Honda also do the rally version of this, which has a bit less suspension travel, but the bigger frontage for wind protection. So if you're gonna do a few more miles, then, you know, look at the rally version. It's only a couple of hundred quid more, I think, for the rally. But this is the one which is designed to be a little bit more off-road focused. But I must say, it's a tempting proposition for five and a half grand just to have one of these in the garage. Even if, you, you know, if you're thinking of getting into off-roading and you don't want to spend the eight or nine thousand on a dedicated machine which you can only use off-roading. You can't do road miles on it. It's not designed for that. It's off-road only. Then think about getting one of these as a little beginner bike and then just perhaps spend a little bit extra on it like I mentioned. Or just use it as it is and, and, and ride around the shortcomings with the suspension until you get to the point where you feel that you may want to worth investing in it and changing some stuff. As I say, Norley went from South America to Alaska on a standard bike with standard suspension, even the standard rubber to start with, and there's a lot of off-road in that. And it, it, it amazed me how capable this little machine was with minimal issues. You know, I think she had a side stand snap, but you know, no engine problems, might have had a fork seal. But this, I think she's done like 20,000 miles of hard hard miles on it a lot of off-road as well quite incredible how durable this engine is in this bike i will be back shortly with a little bit more off-road because i've actually been invited to greece with suzuki for the new v-strom 1050 de launch so uh, that's going to be a lot of off-road on that launch as you know as that bike is the off-road version of the v-strom if you like so uh, looking forward to that so if you're interested in seeing a bit more off-road or interested in the new v-strom 1050 de hit the subscribe button below and i will see you on the next video out in greece where hopefully it'll be a little bit warmer cheers guys come to greece they said ride in the sun they said the is getting covered in snow can't bloody see Do watch out because it is a sheer, a sheer drop that side. This is absolutely fantastic. 